Welcome, this is Get Good Geeks, or Triple G if you prefer. This is where I let my masochistic side come out, and I try to take on some of the harder games in various different libraries in an effort to, well, suck less at these games overall. The idea is to eventually go through, show you the process that I did to learn to how to beat them, and then eventually do a full clear on them with no save states and no tricks, no nothing, just a full, straight clear. During this, I'll be pointing out various different pitfalls, challenges, and areas that I consider particularly brutal or cheap so that you can hopefully follow along and learn a few things about how to beat this game on your own. That said, let's go ahead and get started. When we last left Sketch, he was fighting the Mother Dragon on the end of Act 1, basically making her torture herself. So, now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and proceed on our way into Act 2. Welcome to the Himalayas! Let's go ahead and pick up Roadkill and get you a Power Fist. If we go ahead and use them here, you will find you a secret item. Told you this guy was useful. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to head to the right because you got no other options and we're going to fight off a couple of new enemies that they call Sticks. Uh, this guy's kind of a pain in the butt. He blocks a lot, he can poke you really quickly, he will actually jump up on that stick and bounce around, sometimes energy rings pop up on it. He's overall just a pain in the butt. The best thing you can do is just keep constant pressure on him, take him down using a mix of different attacks, and I hope you make it through without too much damage. I I've never really found a great way of dealing with these guys. Other people may have. I have not. So, as you move on from them, you'll find that this next panel is pretty easy. Just make sure to jump really high and break this block. You don't have to break this box. However, it has a nice T in it. And anytime you get a chance to get a health item in this game, you take it. And there's no reason not to. You take very little damage for the amount that you get. This is your first puzzle of the stage where you need to jump over, push that block, and you need to block this hole. If you do not, those little scree things will continue to spawn endlessly, and you'll never get out of this panel. Just take your time, take these guys out, and then you're going to have to shoulder charge into these constantly. One of the reasons this stage gets so much hate, and the reason I don't like it, is there's a lot of unavoidable damage in this stage, period. Here, you have to shoulder charge to break the ice, and then push this one across. Use it to break this little piston thing. Now you can basically wipe this guy out, and drop down into the next panel. And this thing right here, this is the worst item in the game. Um. I end up picking it up anyway because it gives me a free item, but it has like a 1 in 10 chance of exploding in your face. And there have been playthroughs where consistently in some areas, these things continue to blow up on me. It can give you any item in the game, but it can also take about half of your life. So proceed on these with caution. I tend to almost always pick this one up because most of the time this thing's not going to explode and it's going to give you a decent item. If I could speed up one section of this game, this would probably be it. I, I swear to God, it's kind of like they felt like they needed to do an evil monologue in the middle of the game. You kind of literally sit here for about 10 to 15 seconds just waiting on this dialogue to pop up and to go away. I mean, in the time that I've been talking, I probably could have showed you like three panels. And yet here we are, basically listening to this. This panel is pretty basic. You just take out these two guys here. Once they're down, you're going to fight another one of the more basic enemies that come up. So you kill this guy too. Pattern's the same as it is with all the others. This one tends to block a little bit more and be a little bit more annoying than they have been in the past. One of the things you'll notice in this game, enemies tend to kind of scale to health. They don't really give you new versions or new color colorations of the same enemy. However, they do seem to be able to block better and they seem to eat less damage overall. Now you're going to fight another Styx. Just do the same thing to him that you did with the first two. Continue to pound on him. Continue to apply pressure. Don't let him get any more of an upper hand than you have to, or he will chip away significantly a lot of your health. Once he is down, however, you're going to be able to use a trick here. This enemy here, you can actually use Roadkill. Roadkill will actually eventually scare her off of the stage. See how she dropped down there? That's just going to save you a lot of hassle you don't need. So since I got a iced tea as my item, I'm going to go ahead and pick that up because I want to be able to pick up another item here. If you use roadkill here, you get a bomb. And the best and only way I found to kill this guy is to basically blow him up. Now, 
You happen to remember that power fist I told you to save? Yeah, that power fist. That one right there. Now how I told you how to save that one? Yeah, we're gonna use it here. Because the screes that are on this stage in this particular panel are a huge pain in the ass. I died dozens of times here. Because you can take approximately three hits on this rope and you will fall to your death. And there are roughly six of those things that spawn in this area. You have very limited ways to be able to dodge them and very limited room to be able to work. So the best thing you can do is get yourself the hell out of this situation. So let's go ahead and use that power fist, shall we? So what you're going to notice when you use this power fist is sometimes the panel will break, sometimes it won't. At the very least, this will give you some space to be able to go ahead and kick at it and will kill the sticks that was just behind it and you can use this platform to be able to take out the rest of these guys. Now, you'll see plenty of videos on the internet of people being able to take those things out on the rope. I never found it worth the hassle. It's much preferred to go ahead and get on here, jump up, kick them once, maybe hit them once on the rope, and then deal with the rest of them and just work your way through them slowly. You won't take that much damage if you're careful, and you're gonna be a heck of a lot safer and run much less of a risk of just falling to your death pointlessly in losing all your items. So now that you've finished that, that's the end of panel one of act two. Let's go ahead and proceed into act two, panel two. So you're going to have to deal with two more of these little scurry things. This seems to be one of their favorite enemies in the game for some reason, probably just because they're annoying and they like pissing off players. I'm not really sure why. But you're also going to notice that you can grab onto that particular plank right there. Watch what happens when I grab it. So you can do that and that'll open the door, but notice as you run towards it, you can't really do much. Well, there's two ways of doing this. You can try to roll towards it, which is down and towards, which is kind of a pain in the butt to execute. You can throw a bomb or you can do what I opted to do because I just didn't care on this run and you could just punch it to death. You should have gotten a nice tea from the sticks that you killed in the panel before this. Make sure to pick that up. You may need to go ahead and use it. If so, that's fine. Right here, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and use Roadkill. He'll randomly do a lot of damage to these particular girls and kind of wear them down for you. And he'll even get some of them to jump off the screen. So go ahead and let him out. Let him do his thing and run around while you continue to wail on him. Trust me, you're going to save yourself a lot of damage that way. And go ahead and break through this last panel. Pick up this bomb. This is the next puzzle here because we're going to go to the left. And you're just going to throw the bomb here. That will break that. Then you can start kicking these things. You'll notice he's lit the panel on fire, which sucks, so it's pretty much a race down to the bottom. So just keep on kicking, keep on kicking, keep on kicking, kick, 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 kick. Getting your kicks yet? Okay, um, I'm done with the jokes. Drop down, and you're going to want to roll towards this thing again and break it. That way you don't eat a ton of damage trying to get over here. Again, like I said before, Act 2 sucks because there's a lot of unavoidable damage. It's just something you have to deal with. Now this, a lot of people want to break these things. Don't do that. Just jump and watch how his projectile does damage to each one of these punching bags when you're in here. He will eventually break all three of them for you. And then you can just mop him up. I think I actually made a pretty bad mistake here when I started wailing on him and it ate a lot of damage I really didn't need to. This guy doesn't have that much health compared to normal sticks. I was just playing very poorly in this section. But once you deal with him, you can drop down into the next area where there's going to be yet another puzzle. So you can see right here, I'm dropping down. Here's a box, which you're going to want to break because it always contains an iced tea, which by this point you're going to need. So go ahead and down that sucker and then let Roke loose and stand next to this thing because he will flip the switch and then you can roll underneath. He'll take very minimal damage. Now this guy, this guy sucks. He's probably the most annoying boss in the game. You're going to have to watch his hands really closely. That's pretty much the entire fight. He will launch these orbs that will go into the water. You'll have to jump over them or you'll eat a ton of damage. He can wear you down in a heartbeat with these things. So just keep jumping over them and wait for him to come down. When his hands flash, both of them flash like that. You want to do a low kick or avoid him? One hand, when the top hand or the bottom hand flashes, you want to make sure that you don't get hit by the fingernails that he launches during that particular phase. 
So notice I just jump kicked him there, avoiding more of these. And then he's got both hands flashing and then he had the top hand flash. Then the bottom one and nails flashed. The ideal thing to do here is if you see those nails glowing on the wall right there, is to kick him into those. You don't really do a lot of damage to him. Those nails do, they explode. And they will explode if you hit them as well. So be very careful during this fight. This fight can be super annoying because sometimes it's very hard to push him. See, he took an explosion from that one. And then sometimes you can actually get him to take two at one time if you're careful. So watch, be cognizant of when you hit him and just keep wailing on him. Eventually, you'll get him. He only really needs three of those to die. So just keep watching and focusing and you'll get him down. Don't forget to tune in next time on Get Good Geeks where we go ahead and finish act three and defeat the final boss. And it looks like we've got a no death run on our hands. That's right. Once you understand this game and you understand what the little tricks are, it's not that hard to do a no death run on. So stick around. Oh, and until next time, Happy gaming.